Way back in 2015, uh, when Donald Trump was just candidate Trump, there were some concerns about his health and his age. I mean, if you look at him, he looks like he's pretty overweight, and uh, obviously he's on the older age, uh, older age, or part of the skept, uh, a spectrum for age. So uh, to alleviate some of those concerns, he released a letter from his doctor. We were told, describing in extremely uh, Trumpian language and detail his Captain America-esque physique. Uh, let's bring up the letter to show you some of the highlights. If you don't recall this, uh, it's small text. I apologize, but it points out that his lab results were astonishingly excellent. By the way, it starts to whom my concern. To whom my concern. <laughs> yeah, that was that should have been your first tip. I think that is pointing out, without meaning to, that Bornstein is concerned. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> over 39 years, Mr. Trump has had no significant medical problems. Well, that is just amazing. Uh, despite that, despite the fact that he was already in amazing health, he found a way to lose 15 pounds over the past 12 months. Uh, his physical strength and stamina are extraordinary. Um, let's see, he suffered no cancer. Well, that's actually good and probably true. Uh, he has no history of ever using alcohol or tobacco products. He does not urinate nor defecate. His body makes perfect <laughs> use of everything you put into it. And he will be the healthiest individual ever elected to the presidency. Screw JFK, screw Lincoln, who was I think a wrestler and a boxer. Mm -hmm. No, this overweight TV watching man will be the healthiest person. Well, Barack ever. Obama used to smoke and play basketball. At the that, same time. That's where you got, you know what I mean? That's healthy. <laughs> yeah. That's healthy when you're like, yeah, I'm smoking on the basketball yeah. court. Well, you want to you, keep in perfect balance with your body. You're yeah. killing your lungs, you're bringing right. them back. Killing now you're just showboating. When you hit the jumper while you're taking a drag, <laughs> you know. And you drop the stick and you walk off the, so, off the court. Uh, but so I guess the the reason we're coming back to this is I I mean you knew you knew when you first read that right Donald Trump wrote that well, Donald Trump did write that so how, uh, the Bernstein the, the uh, doctor now says he dictated that whole letter I didn't write that letter I just made it up as I went along that's black humor that letter that's my sense of humor it's like the movie Fargo it takes the truth and moves it in a different direction. Like the so, movie yeah. Fargo or this administration, yes, either one. The Take the truth, go in a different Ooh. direction. No, I really think after you know being reminded of this letter, the presidency is the only thing that kept Trump out of the Avengers Infinity <laughs> War because this man, it, I mean, astonishingly excellent laboratory tests. Physical strength and stamina are extraordinary, and mm -hmm. uh, he can lift Thor's hammer. <laughs> if if anyone's hammer. curious, he can lift Thor's hammer. <laughs> that so he's got that ad. going for him. Uh, yeah, it, it's it really is. That would have been a great addition. <laughs> it, it, and by the way, P.S. My, uh, Mr. Trump can lift Thor's hammer. Just that's throws right. it at a statue of Hillary. When I get my physical it. done, I'm telling my doctor, listen, you got to step it up. Mm -hmm. You got to. I want to have mm -hmm. the bestest blood pressure ever. Yeah, I think that should be good. Yeah. And um, the oh. best, the best description I've ever had. And from a my glowing doctor is prostate. I want a glowing, glowing. I want a glowing prostate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 He absorbs gamma radiation, <laughs> and his prostate just glows. <laughs> Um, so look, this is obviously funny, but some of you might be thinking, like, come on, is this? Well, first of all, we sort of knew. Does this really matter? But, but I think that this actually does matter for a couple of different reasons. I mean, first of all, I don't think that you're wrong to be worried about the potential health of a president. I mean, you can take it too far and spread conspiracy theories about Hillary's Parkinson's, and she was she was supposed to die like a year and a half yeah, ago. She, I remember, she was, but she hasn't. She was going to die. So you can take this too far, and certainly being in poor health, like if it. If they revealed that Trump was obese, that doesn't mean he doesn't get to be president or anything like that, but people might want to know. So there's that. But then much more importantly, this is a person who will pressure his longtime employees to lie about him to fool people. And so if he'll do that with this guy, would he do it with Ronnie Jackson? Would he do it with his lawyers? Would he do it with people in his, in his cabinet? Like, Can you trust statements that are coming out? For instance, a while back, he tweeted about Michael Flynn, and the reason he gave for why he fired Michael Flynn did not fit in with what he had previously said. And it potentially exposed him to some liability from the ongoing investigation. So the next day, they said he didn't tweet that, his lawyer tweeted that. First of all, I don't think Donald Trump would let someone else tweet on his account for the most part, certainly not like a lawyer. But he said it. Do we have any reason to believe that's true? If he's getting doctors to lie about him and say that they wrote something when it was really him. Uh, I find I'll, this to be concerning. I, I think. 
we have uh, evidence, sort of chapter and verse, that he pressures people under him to do things and to drop investigations. We have the whole Comey conversation, you know, during which there were contemporaneous, contemporaneous, contemporaneous notes on just the thing you're talking about. So we know that that's the case. But I think the other aspect to this, and it is funny because the doctor himself is so funny, everything's so cartoonish in this. I mean, the wording of the letter is weird and wrong and their misspellings, all this sort of thing. But mm -hmm. that aside... You remember in the run-up to the presidential, the presidential election, during that run-up, they made a big deal out of Hillary's health. You alluded to it. They suggested that she was uh, of failing health to the point that she might not even be able to complete her term if she did become president. He made a big deal out of her stamina. And the media, really, they were co-opted by that narrative. They, they asked questions about Hillary's uh, health. And Meanwhile, they pretty much let Trump skate on what, as I said, is a sort of a cartoonish letter. Yeah. So I think it's in view that I was no fan of Hillary Clinton. We all sort of on agreement in terms of what we, what we were feeling at, as, the, as the election drew near. But what I was trying to say uh, in relation to this is that this takes on a much more serious tone when you consider the damage done to Hillary, suggesting that she was not in good health. Can you imagine if Hillary had gotten her doctor to release exactly this? Like, like she has Olympic level stamina and strength. Like she well, can do cartwheels and blow your mind. Yeah. I mean, this is an exit to me. This is just an example of Trump lies about everything. Mm -hmm. That's what's comical about it. Like this is this is something like you said you didn't need to lie about. And you're right. They made it a big deal with Hillary's camp. You know, the the, the ridiculousness of her being in bad health because she coughed. You yeah. know, which means she was going to die any moment. But when you look at this, and and this is what's comical about it. So it says here that um, when they raided the doctor's office and they took everything from Trump, they took away Propecia, a medication that promotes hair growth. Mm -hmm. But we know if Propecia offered Donald Trump money to do a commercial for him, mm -hmm. he would have done it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, don't let him know I take it. Oh wait, they want to pay me to take it? <laughs> you know what I use? It, it, so. To me, that's just the example. But again, and and what you said, and also we were talking off screen about Michelle Wolf, what she talked about, this is where the media plays along with Trump. Mm -hmm. None of them would challenge Trump. Trump makes this ridiculous lies about his health, but it sounds good, it's good TV, it's good for ratings, so they're yeah. fine with it. Hillary, they go after like it's real news, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So so just like Michelle Wolf said, where where the media sees like clickbait, Right, we can get we can get more clicks by saying Trump is in astonishing health or what. Then they're fine yeah. with. They don't question it. Yeah. This is this is ridiculous. Nobody gets this kind. Of, like you said, Captain America would be the only one who yeah. get this kind of health report. And yeah. this is a reminder then of the pass that the media gave Donald Trump. The media bears immense responsibility for having given Donald Trump a pass. This is just one place they gave him a pass. He yeah. got a pass a lot of other places too. How can a guy who's completely vacuous and incompetent get to the presidency? Because the media is a co-conspirator. Yeah. And I just wanna add one more thing. First of all, thank you for mentioning the raid. I guess I didn't actually mention that. So <laughs> uh, Trump's bodyguard and two other people raided his doctor's office and took all the materials they had on Trump. That seems like that should be more more news than it is. Exactly. That's, That's another. Odd. Why the would media's a co-conspirator right now. I'm co-conspiratoring. I didn't mention it until <laughs> yeah. now. Alonzo had to bring it up. You're co-conspirator number one. I'm just visiting. I'm just thank visiting. you. Yeah. Thank you. But, uh, but wait, wait. One other thing I want to add because obviously, I mean, we've pointed out that this is basically the origin story for a superhero. There was one other thing Harold Bornstein said. He said Trump dictated the letter, and I would tell him what he couldn't put in there. They came to pick up their letter at four o'clock or something. So what this implies is that that ridiculous letter isn't as bad as Trump wanted it to be. Trump tried to push farther and Harold Bornstein, who's a legitimate crazy person himself, actually drew the line somewhere. God only knows what it was. He can spit webs out of his wrists or something. He and can fly like a graceful swan. But anyway, just, that's what we got. I'm sorry, but getting back to the media, this, this is where the media plays along. Um, after the talk about the raid on the doctor's office, Trump's bodyguard and his people, blah, blah, blah. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders told the Boston Globe that the alleged raid of Bornstein's office was standard procedure for a newly elected president. And then it goes <laughs> away. So, so when Barack Obama was elected, he sent his bodyguards to, you mm. know, raid his doctor's office, George W. Bush, like it's what presidents do, right? After you yeah. get elected, you just send them out and let's let's raid the doctor's office. Like yeah. but the fact that she could just say that with a straight face and no one raised their hands, excuse me, that's ridiculous. Like right. nobody 
challenges her when she says something so utterly ridiculous. Except Michelle Wolf, perhaps. <laughs> and how dare she call Sarah Huckabee Sanders a liar? Well, and, yeah. and, but, but this is an important point Alonzo's making about this raid because if you sent a bunch of goons into your doctor's office and grabbed all of your files, you'd be arrested for that. They'd yeah. call the police, right? It, you can't just send people over. Uh, there's no warrant. There's no subpoena. There's nothing. There's well, just a bunch of big dudes in suits who go in and clean the doctor's office out. Yeah. Well, as someone who's played a big dude in suits in numerous movies, well, numerous. <laughs> it's a bunch two, of guys who look like you. Two, it's too numerous. It is something that can be numered. <laughs> yeah. But, but no, but I mean, you can do that, right? It, I imagine if you're an executive and you send an assistant to pick up your records from a doctor's office, that's probably legal. But hmm. when you're the president and you send someone to pick up your, your records from a doctor's office because you don't want anyone to see them, that's a little suspicious. Yeah. So the, 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 the thing about them being big guys or, or whatever they look like isn't important. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it may be legal, they are your medical records. But I think the press should be somewhat interested in why did you grab everything from this doctor's office, including yeah. like Propecia, which is like, We've seen your hair. We know you've been yeah. trying to grow something up yeah. there. Yeah, and, and if you're in the media and you, you don't find that to be odd, if it had come out that Hillary Clinton had set her bodyguards to take all of her medical materials one dark night, how would you have felt about that? Come on. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.